The now function is pretty easy to understand. It calculates what time it is right now, as well as what day it is. Now, I'm going to take this as an opportunity, though, to talk about how time is actually handled inside of Excel. So first of all, if I go to cell M5 and I want to know what the current date and time are, I can go to the Formulas tab at the top of the screen, use the Date and Time drop-down menu, and I need to look for the Now function. The Now function is one of the very few functions that doesn't take any arguments. It doesn't require any additional information to figure out what time it is. So I click on Now, and it tells me that exactly. This function takes no arguments. I click OK, and as you can see, it is both the date and the current time in that cell. Now, at this moment, you can see, though, that you might want just the time, and you probably want the time in a format that isn't uh, what we would call military time using the hours on a 24-hour clock. So in any of these instances, all we really need to do is reformat these cells. We can go to the Home tab at the top of the screen, and using the drop-down menu here in the middle, you can see that if I format it purely as a date, it might tell me uh, February 5th. And if I format it purely as a time, it'd tell me 433 and 43 seconds. And you start thinking to yourself, well, I don't really want to even know the seconds in this instance. So let's try this out. Let's use the drop down menu, click on time. As you can see, it's a format that includes the hours, the minutes, and the seconds. But at least it's not putting the hours on a 24-hour clock, which was something I wanted to avoid. And it puts a little PM at the end. Now, all you have to do if you want to do something special with this is go to the little button in the bottom right-hand corner of the number group and click on it. And you'll see that the formatting for that cell is using a specific format. In this case, hour, minutes, seconds, and then PM at the end. But here, if I choose the one with the hours and the minutes and the PM and no seconds, uh, that will get me where I want to go in this instance. I can click OK here, and as you can see, it shortens it down to 4.33 PM. But it's very important to realize that that's just the formatting. The information that is actually in this cell is February 5th, 2025, 4 to 33 in the afternoon. Now, to that end, all of these things, uh, dates and times, are all actually just number values. And as long as Excel knows that what it's looking at is in fact a number value, it's easy to add and subtract those things from one another. So here, for example, I have cell E6 with the time that we clocked out for lunch, cell F6 for the time we clocked back in after lunch, and so we can do equal sign and click on the time that we clocked back in and subtract the time that we clocked out and hit enter. Now, what this shows us is 12.32 a.m., and this feels incorrect, right? But if you really look at it, what it's telling you in real terms is that it was 32 minutes that this person was out for lunch. And it's just showing that information as 12.32 a.m. because that's the same thing as saying, how long is 32 minutes into a day? So could we format this in a way where it wouldn't show me 12.32 a.m., but instead would show me zero hours and 32 minutes? Let's take a look. Up here at the top of the screen, I find the number group and click the pop out button here in the bottom right hand corner. And I can see all of these different format types. So for example, here, if I click on this one that has a colon and then a decimal, I see that that would be 32 minutes and zero seconds, point zero. And there are many other options in here. Like for example, this one with the 13 colon 30 colon 55, which would be hours, minutes, and seconds. And then this one, which would just be hours and minutes.
So here I'm going to choose this type of format for zero hours and 32 minutes as the lunch period. I click OK. And again, I auto fill this down and I see that that formatting has done a really nice job of showing me who was out for an hour or more and who was out for a shorter period than that. In the same way, I can subtract the time that we clocked out minus the time that we clocked in and then also subtract the amount of time we were out for lunch to come out with the total number of working hours that day. So do an equal sign, click on the time that we clocked out, minus the time that we clocked in, and minus the total duration that we were out for lunch. Now again, when we hit enter, it says 8.54 a.m., which really means that this person worked for 8 hours and 54 minutes on this day. So how can we get that to show up appropriately? We come up here to the number group, we click on the little pop out button here in the corner, and we choose a type of formatting that shows it in a way that we can all understand. I click OK, I auto fill down, and I can now see people who worked for less than seven hours, between seven hours and eight hours, people who worked for more than eight hours, people who worked for more than nine hours, on that particular 